Hi, this is Propositional Logic Truth Tables for Arguments, and I'm Mark Thorsby. What we'll be doing in this video is essentially um, laying out how you can utilize truth tables in order to evaluate arguments once they've been put into propositional form. This is building on what we've just discussed in terms of propositional um, in terms of classify, utilizing truth tables, evaluating um, uh, prop, evaluating statements, I'm sorry, and also comparing propositional statements. But ultimately, since logic is the study of argumentation, we have to move our discussion forward into the question of how do we actually use this when we talk about arguments. Uh, and so that's what this video is beginning to cover. Um, so what we're, we're going to do is, uh, I'll move over here to the whiteboard in just a sec, but what I want to do first is show you some of the basic conventions for utilizing truth tables, and then after going through those conventions, then we will keep going um, and give you a sense of how you determine whether or not a propositional argument is valid or invalid. So let me move you over here to the whiteboard. Um, okay, let me grab my tool here. Um, I realize I should, instead of, since my handwriting is so bad, I'm going to see if I can just utilize the text, uh, just type it out for you. So here we're looking at um, truth tables. Um, sorry about that, someone sent me an email. Truth tables for argumentation. Okay, um, and so here are some of the conventions. Number one, the first convention to notice here is let me move this down. Number one is that premises are separated um, by a single dash. Forward, actually I should say forward slash. Okay, so basically this symbol. Number two, uh, the conclusion is separated from the premises by a double forward slash. Okay, that's the first thing we need to know here. So let me grab my pen and show you some examples. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So premises are forward by a single. Premises are separated by a single forward slash, and the conclusion is separated by a double slash. So let me sort of slide this over and give you an example of what I mean. Um, let's take an argument here. Um, well, let's let's take an argument. Let me actually read you an argument, for instance, and we'll sort of build from there. Um, so here's the argument. Here's an example. If juvenile killers are are as responsible for their crimes as adults, then execution is just is a justifiable punishment. Juvenile killers are not as responsible for their crimes as adults. Therefore, execution is not a justifiable punishment. So essentially, if we were going to outline it, it would look like this. If J, then E, it's not the case that J, therefore it's not the case that E. Um, this is how we were, we tended to write, we tended to write our arguments um, sort of kind of line by line like this when we were doing categorical logic, but here we're going to just sort of change the structure and put J, well let me write it down here, J, therefore E, slash not J, therefore not E. E, right? So this is, we're going to write it horizontally our arguments in which each premise is separated by a slash. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm running out of room over here, so let me scoot it over here. Let me rewrite that for you. So you get J, therefore E, not J, therefore, I'm sorry, J, therefore E, not J, therefore not E, right? So this is the argument. Now, the next thing, the key concept to note here is um, the in order for an argument to be valid, here I'm just going to write it, right? What we're actually going to be looking for is a case in which we can uh, remember. Actually, in order for an argument to be valid, it ha it cannot be, let's say, invalid, right? How do we define invalidity? We define invalidity as essentially when an argument has where the, an argument has true premises. and a false conclusion, right? That, if you can recall back when we first started logic, 
that's how we define it. We said an argument, if an argument is true premises and a false conclusion, it's invalid. Now, so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be looking for, in order to determine whether or not an argument's valid, we're going to look to see if we can find an invalid instance on one of those rows. If we cannot find an invalid instance, then we'll conclude it's valid. Let me give you an example. Let's go back to our example here. J therefore E, not J therefore E. We, since first the first step here is once you translate it, is then to figure out how many rows you need. Here we have two variables. So remember our equation here was right L to the 2 to the nth power. In this case, L to the 2 to the second, which is L is equal to 4. So that means we need four lines. Um, in this case, it's quite simple. We've got true, true, false, false. I'm going to do all the J's first. True, true, false, false, just to keep it accurate. And then the E here is going to be true, false, true, false. I'll do the same with this one. True, false, true, false. Now what I need to do, and I'll change my color here, um, make it a dark green. Um, under this main operator, right, using the rule of conjunction again, that means the true, true, that's true. Here we have a true, false, so that's false, right? And a false and a true is true, and this one's true, right? That's what comes under that main operator. The main operator in this, so that's the main operator in this first premise was the conditional. The main operator in the second premise here is the negation. So that's false, false, true, true. And then, of course, we have to look over here. The main operator of the uh, conclusion here is, again, this negation. So, or I'll put an arrow. So that's going to be false, true, false, true. Now, now that we've done this, you see we could compare each statement, but we're not going to be doing that. In order to search for whether or not the argument's valid, what we want to what we want to ascertain is whether or not there's an instance in which you have true premises and a false conclusion. So what you need to do is you need to look at these three rows, the rows, uh, I'm sorry, not rows, the columns under which the truth values fall under the main operators for the premises and the conclusion. And if we can find a case in which the premises are true, but the conclusion is false on the same row, that will be an invalid argument. So the question is, can we find that? So let's sort of see what we can find. This is true and this is false. No, nope. they have to both be true. So you can see here, these last two lines. Oh, we found it here on the third line, right? In this row, we have true premises and a false conclusion, which means that this argument is actually invalid, right? And so, if we, f if we cannot, let's say for instance we did a problem and we couldn't find that it's invalid, then we would conclude that it's valid. But this case, we found it's invalid. That means this is a bad argument, right? Um, right, and that actually just makes sense if you think about it, right? Because you can imagine it's something like this. Um, for instance, instead of J and E of the same form, you can say, if you throw a bucket of water at me, then I'm going to get wet. You don't throw a bucket of water on me, therefore I'm not going to get wet. Well, all it takes to show that that argument is valid is to say that I'm taking a shower where I'm wet and you haven't thrown a bucket of water on me. That would be a substitution instance. Um, so let's sort of, sorry, so remember we're keeping with these rules. Again, premises are separated by a single forward slash and the conclusion is separated from the premises by a double dash. And number three here is validity is determined by looking for invalidity. And invalidity is when you find true premises and a false conclusion. Let's do another problem. Let me see if I can go back here. Um, okay. Um, so let's take, let me sort of take another problem here. Let's say we have, um, I'll just make one up in fact. Um, change the color of my pen. So here we've got, let's say I have um, P, therefore T, uh, P, the negation of T, therefore um, t, right? Okay, now can we prove this valid? Now if you're doing this, you probably already see the answer, um, or if you're pausing it and doing it. So let me give you an example here. Let's kind of, let me sort of run it through. Again, I have four variables. So this would be true, true, sorry I'm using green this time, false, false, true, true, 
false, false, true, true. Whoops. Oh, you see, I made a mistake there. Um, okay, let's do T. That's true, false, true, false. That's true, false, right? True, false, true, false, true, false. Okay, in this case, you can see I have three premises. Premise one, premise two, and premise three. Um, let me, maybe I can move that down a little bit. That's as far as it goes down. Um, okay, so the main operator on premise two is already done because there's only one thing. Um, so let's look on this one. Change our my color again to red. So this is going to be true, false, true, true, false, true, false, true. Now, the lines that I need to evaluate again is what falls under the main operator. So that's this line right here, this P line here, and then this negation line. And then finally, this conclusion right here. And again, in order to determine whether or not it's valid, I'm looking for a case in which there's all true instance. All the premises are true, right? But the conclusion is false. If I can find this case, a row in which all of this is the case, then it's invalid. So let's test. Here we have true, true, false. Mm, nope. False, true, true. That doesn't work. They have to all be true. True, false, false, no. True, false, true. Nope. And so you can see this is actually because I could not find a case in which all of the premises are true and the conclusion is false. I will therefore argue, well, therefore this argument is valid. Um, and what I've done here is because if it's not valid, I mean, if it's not invalid, it has to be valid. So this argument is actually a valid argument. I mean, that should make sense, right? Because look at this conditional. This conditional says if you have P, then you can get T. Premise two says I have P. It only it makes sense, therefore, that I have T. This third premise I threw in, negation of T, just to see if I could confuse you. Uh, but obviously I didn't. Um, so that's another example of using uh, truth tables for arguments. It's pretty, it's quite straightforward, actually. And so essentially the steps that you have to take in order to do this is, remember, one, you have to symbolize your argument. Two, you need to you need to write it out with the dashes, right? So you need to put it into its correct propositional form, which is horizontal with the dashes. Um, you need to do construct your truth table. And then number four here, you need to um, search for invalidity. If you cannot find invalidity, an invalid line, then it's either then it's valid, and that's essentially all that all you need to do. One thing um, that's essentially all there is. It's quite simple, actually. So I'm hoping that this video will help you really get to the core of this issue, um, or get to the core of how to do this. Uh, for those of people in my course, make sure to then go ahead read what's um, read the read the text and do your homeworks, and um, feel free to post me any questions you have. Okay. Um, that's the video. Uh, I'll move it over here and say goodbye to you. Um, so thank you very much for watching and I look forward to um, hearing your comments and I'm hoping those videos are helping you. I include both people in my class and all the people on YouTube. Okay.